Sabrina from Parky Technologies, your productivity tool for collaborative data protection management. This is another video from our Data Privacy Jargon Explained series, where we go over specific terms often used in the world of data protection compliance. If you enjoy our content and want to get more useful tips on data protection compliance, then go ahead and hit our subscribe button now. Okay, so today we're going to talk about something that is a crucial part of data protection regulations and also something that many companies are dreading to receive, and that is a data subject access request, or also often called a DSAR or an SAR or SAR. Well, what is it? Why is it important? And what do you need to do when you receive one? Well, that's exactly what we're going to cover today, so stay tuned and we're going to start with the what. What is a data subject access request? First of all, a data subject is the official term used to describe any person or individual whose personal data is protected under regulations like the GDPR. And a data subject access request is one of several rights the GDPR grants, and it is the right of individuals to request access to the data from a company or organization. That's right. This means individuals can go anytime to any company organization that processes the personal data one way or the other and ask to not only get a copy on what data they hold about them, but also other supplementary information such as how the company uses their data. And keep in mind that it really doesn't matter what the relationship between the data subject and the company is. It can be as a customer, it can be a contractor, employee, job candidate, and even a sales prospect. Also, it is possible to make a DSAR on behalf of someone else. For example, when acting through a proxy or a legal guardian on behalf of a minor. Why is this important? Well, the overall aim of the right of access is to provide individuals with sufficient, transparent, and easily accessible information about the processing of the personal data. This way, individuals can be aware of and verify the lawfulness of the processing and the accuracy of the process data. It can also make exercising other rights easier, such as the right to erasure or rectification. So you may wonder, could you not just ignore it when your company receives a DSAR? And the answer is no, you really should not. If you do, individuals can make a complaint with the authorities when their rights are not being respected which means ignoring a DSAR could quickly lead to massive eye-watering fines and on top bring serious reputational damage. So you really want to think about that twice. How do DSAR have to be submitted? Well, there is no rule here. Uh, data subjects can make a DSAR verbally or in writing using any available channel, be it via email or over phone. And as a company, you can't really use the excuse that the person has not made the request with the right person or through the right channel. However, as a company, you can implement processes and train your workforce on how DSARs should be best submitted. For example, you may direct your customers to an online form accessible through your website's privacy notice to make a DSAR. So what are some of the things you should consider when dealing with a DSAR? Well, first of all, do not panic. And then ensure, the very first thing you should do, ensure that you validated who made the request. It is your responsibility to make sure that the person who is requesting access to the data is really who they say they are. And you may verify this that, you know, through the fact that they're the account owner um, or you request a copy of the ID depending on who or what personal data you're processing. The next thing is you want to make sure that you manage the time. The request must be fulfilled as soon as possible and in any event shouldn't take longer than 30 calendar days from the day of the request that the request was made. This can be extended by two months um, where necessary considering the complexity or the number of requests. So what should be in a DSAR response? The right of access includes mainly three components. One, first of all, confirming whether or not you are processing data about that individual. And then second, if you do, 
Um, you need to provide a copy of that personal data you hold about them. And then third, any additional information um, that should go with it, such as the purpose of processing, who the personal data is shared with, how long the personal data will be stored, maybe the existence of any automated decision making, such as profiling, if any. How do you share your DSAR response? So the GDPR does not set a rule here and rather leaves you with a vague instruction to ensure that your response is shared in a secure fashion that takes also into account the type of data you process. So here you can consider things such as password protected folders with end-to-end -end encryption or USB drives where the password is shared separately. Can you refuse to respond to a DSAR? Yes but only in limited situations and when, that only when the request is manifestly unfounded or excessive. This, however, is a very high threshold to meet and you must be able to prove that the request is manifestly unfounded or excessive. For example, if a request is sent from the same person every month. Can you charge a fee for a DSAR? The simple answer and straightforward answer is no, charging fees for data requests is not permitted. Okay, and last but not least, who should respond to a DSAR? Well, the best person here to handle DSARs should be really your company's data protection officer, as the DPO is familiar with data flows in the company and the different data protection regulations. Responding to DSARs, therefore, um, requires a careful understanding of what personal information you store, where it is located, and its purpose. However, if you do not have a DPO, just make sure you have someone in the company who leads this process and has the support from the leadership team to fulfill such a request. Okay, great. Now you know what a data subject access request is and what it entails. I really hope you enjoyed this video and you found it useful. I'm Sabrina from Palki Technology and I really hope to see you soon again. Until next time, bye.